Hello, Where today we are going to be making some paradisiacal pasta. I'm not actually going to weigh anything out. Um, we're trying to communicate with our dough. We're trying to sort of learn the feel of how it should be. So let's tip out some double zero white flour and then go in with a bit of semolina flour. We're looking at about a one to four ratio of semolina to wheat flour. And then finally finish it off obviously with a pinch of salt for seasoning. And then just give everything a mix through, making sure everything is thoroughly combined. And then we're just gonna form it into a bit of a mound and form a little well in the middle. In there, I've got these beautiful free range, um, fresh local eggs. I'm gonna actually drop in two whole eggs and one egg yolk. I think that the extra egg yolk adds not only the color, but the richness to the actual noodle in itself. And we're literally just gonna feed our way through the dough. So take a little fork, making sure that the egg doesn't actually spill out. Otherwise, good luck with that mess. Go in with a bit of olive oil and just literally whip up those eggs. And what you're going to see happening is every time you whisk, your eggs are going to pick up a fine layer of flour. What this is going to ensure is that there are no clumps in the final product. The last thing you need is when you're rolling it out later on and you find a massive clump of just dry flour stuck inside, it's a nightmare. So, you know, just it is a bit time consuming, but you know, you've come this far, you're going to do it anyway, you might as well do it right. Now, once it becomes almost difficult for your fork to go through the egg mixture, it's time to get down and dirty with your hands. Uh, we're going to start to sort of almost pass this around like a little ball through one hand to the other. Just It just helps incorporate more flour. Once you kind of feel, a, you know, a central mass form in your hands, you're going to start kneading it. Now, this bad boy needs kneading for at least 10 minutes. You're going to see the egg sort of absorb more flour and, and it's going to result in a smoother, almost shiny kind of ball. Now, if you do need to add more moisture, just go ahead and put in some cold water. And obviously, if you need more flour, you've always got the excess on the sides. But just keep at it for about 10 minutes. And as if by magic, mine came out looking like this. The way I like to test the doneness of mine is by making an indentation with my finger and it should sort of like a memory foam spring out on itself again. And then what we're going to do is just wrap it up nice and tight, making sure there's no air in there and set it in the fridge for about half an hour. And this is my pasta roller. They are inexpensive. They're not, you know, they don't cost too much, but I, I would call it a kitchen essential for anybody who likes to eat good pasta on a fairly or semi-regular basis. Now flour down your work surface, try to do it in slow motion so you look cool and also flour down your knife and just cut the dough into a manageable portion and just rewrap the bit that you're not going to use and put it back in the fridge to let it set some more. Now take out some of your weekly frustrations and pound out this bit of dough to make it a bit more manageable to go into the pasta roller. If you don't have one of these, you can do the rolling by hand. It's just going to come out a bit more uneven unless you're an expert at rolling. I completely suck at this, so um, I, I need the roller. Now I'm going to give myself a bit of a head start by laminating it in on itself and allowing it to be fed through the rollers. Keeping it as straight and steady as possible, we're going to start rolling it through on the thickest setting. Running it through at least two or three times, essentially kneading it as we're going along. Um, now, don't be tempted to jump a couple of settings. What that actually does is put sheer force on the gluten where the tensile strength hasn't yet been developed. So you'll just end up tearing the dough. So just bear with it, stay patient, and you'll end up with a sheet of pasta you can be proud of. Now, the ideal thickness we're going for is dependent really on what you're making um, and your preferences. But, you know, if you're doing something like myself, then roll it so it's just thin enough for you to see a hand through like so. Now cut your pasta into sizable portions. I'm actually just going to go through a couple of basic shapes with you. I'm going to start by sectioning these out so about an inch and an inch and a half thick. So we're going to be crimping them in the middle, squeeze them together. This is a classic shape, you've probably seen it before. It's called farfali, which translates into butterflies or well, you're probably more used to seeing it as bow ties. The grooves in the pasta make it amazing to pick up sauce. So, you know, with a classic um, tomato sauce or something like that, it's really, really beautiful. Now onto our next few shapes. These are just variations in length, but just get your sheet of lasagna essentially and just roll it up. Cutting it wide, we're actually going to be making fettuccine. Uh, and then on the flip side, um, the really narrow one are called tagliatelle, and then obviously in the middle, again a classic. We've always seen this before. It's called tagliatelle. Onto the more artisanal shapes. Roll yourself out a little dowel, and just take your thumb and literally just press into it and create a little groove. These are called cavatelli. 
And finally, Maloredus. This is essentially the same as Cavatelli, but we're just going to do it on the back of a fork to create that extra texture, create some more grooves to pick up that beautiful source. But obviously, if you've got the Passarola, you'll see that they've got two blades in there. The settings are for Tagliatelli and Tagliolini. Either way, what you want to do is lightly dust the nest of noodles with a bit of flour just to make sure that it doesn't stick. And that's pretty much good to go. You can either freeze it or hang it out to dry. Um, you know cook it straight away immediately as well just remembering obviously it doesn't require as much cook time as dried pasta because that rehydration of pasta is not necessary here's just a quick example of a batch i made a couple of months ago uh, these have been infused with spinach and the other obviously with beetroot just to add a bit of color make it a bit more fun but yeah they stay and cook beautifully as well these just cook them as regular pasta See, snaps just like regular pasta too. Now I'm just gonna throw together a quick dish. Now I'm not sure how traditional or even if this is an actual recipe, it's just something I like to throw together, um, you know, when you can't be bothered making a long dish. I just start by finely slicing my cloves of garlic. I've got about four cloves there. Um, I also take about a tablespoon or two to three pieces of um, sun-dried tomato and again slice them down. Now get a medium hot pan, add a bit of butter in there and a bit of olive oil and just wait until the butter starts to froth and foam up. Um, and we're going to drop in our garlic and tomatoes and we're just going to cook this through, simmer it through, let the flavours get to know each other until the garlic turns blonde um, and then sprinkle it down with a bit of parsley and just set that aside and let the flavours do their thing. Now we're going to start boiling our pasta. Get your boiling water, sprinkle it down with a bit of salt. If you need to add a bit of oil in, add a bit of oil in. I don't need to so I'm going to leave that bit out and just drop in your pasta. Now, they will sink to the bottom and how you're going to tell that they're cooked is when they start floating to the top. It doesn't take long at all. Now, if you experience this vigorous boil, um, like so, it's the flour reacting to the water and you, you don't see that normally when you're normally boiling your pasta. Uh, but just turn the heat down um, and you'll be fine. Now, continuing on with our sauce, we're going to go in with a tablespoon's worth of basil pesto and just a light grating of parmigiano reggiano in there. And then just drop in your noodles and I like to add in a bit of pasta water as well. Just the starch content in there just helps everything become cohesive and stick to the noodle, get an even coating on there. And finally just finish it off with a grating of parmesan um, and go in with a bit of pepper and I like to finish it off with a bit of um, extra virgin olive oil. I really find the flavour in there just intensifies and harmonises, almost sings with the rest of the flavours in there, trust me. Nice. Now I know there's a lot of people saying, you know, we can't be bothered to make this and you know, it's just we want some quick and easy recipes, but you know what? I think everybody at least just owe it to themselves to experience fresh pasta at least once. And it's just so much better when you've made it yourself. You know, the the, the, the texture's different, it's just oh I'm gonna need to sit down with this. Please like, comment, subscribe, follow me on Instagram, Twitter, all of that. And please, if you like what I do, support me on my Patreon. Happy cooking.